10 minutes away from 10. Time for Beer Aware. We do it um, with Steve Plowman from Hallatau, running through a bunch of various different uh, beer styles um, every single week, one style a week, and um, getting an overseas, overseas example and a local example. Good morning to you. Steve. Good morning, Wimmer. How well, are you? Very well, thanks. Last week was the um, uh, the the Halle, Munich Halle. Yep. And today, the Pilsner. Yes, moving on to a more exciting sort of lager, the Pilsner. Hmm. Exciting, it's exciting lager, um, Pilsner. It's um, really, its origins can be traced back to 1842, where it was brewed um, for the first time. Not as far back as, well, certainly not as far back as the one last week, which was um, no, that's the much 1600s. Older. Um, but this is, this is the first example of a, of a truly golden beer, like a light-coloured beer that was ever brewed. Um, it was a combination of a few different events. Um, in terms of it was the first time they'd really been able to malt the malt and get it nice and gold, lightly kilned, yep. golden colour malt. And the water around Pilsen is very soft water. Which yeah. which helps the the beer to be a lighter colour as How well. How do you get a soft water? Soft water is means it's not not too many minerals, not too hard. So it's all about you know surface water tends to be softer, and then as it travels through the ground, it tends to pick up minerals and hardness and becomes harder. So soft water would be uh, water straight off the roof. Pretty much rainwater, rainwater. is is completely soft. There's no minerals in there at all. Okay, cool. Um, so it was a um, a German brewer actually who brewed it. A guy named Joseph Grohl, I think his name was. And he, yeah, he came up with these nice sort of sequence of events, and made this like well hopped using the local hops in, yep. in the Czech Republic, and um, this lightly killed Moravian malt, and produced this this really lovely sort of golden, golden hoppy beer, which really was an instant hit, basically. And under the Pilsner banner, you have um, different variations, don't you? You've got the German, Bohemian, American. There is it's variations. I mean, it, it is probably the most bastard, bastardized beer <laughs> style in, in the history of beer. Yeah. I mean, technically within within the Czech Republic, um, Pilsner is an appellation. It has to be called a Pilsner. It has to be brewed um, within the city of Pilsen, city walls. So there's only actually two breweries in Pilsen that can actually call it Pilsen. So do they get hacked off that it's um, made elsewhere in the world? They do. I mean, it's it's the same as champagne, really. They mm. could, but, you know... The Czechs, and cheeses now as well. Yeah. yeah. But the Czechs were a bit busy sort of dealing with communism for quite a few years to worry about, you know, <laughs> yeah. who's ripping off their beer. <laughs> Poor bastards. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's one of those styles that the original is, is a really quite a special beer, you know, in terms of that sort of local malt, um, malt intensity and big hop character. And it's been diluted down all over the world, and the, the Pilsner style can be... You know, brewed in whatever city you want, whatever, whatever sort of. But it's it's basically it's a it's a golden hoppy lager. Golden hoppy. Yeah. Okay. And so, so we should definitely be able to get some of that hop characteristic coming. We through. should be able to. Okay. And so that that is the original Pilsner Arkel, which means the original source or yep. the original. Um, and is brewed in one of those two breweries that you were talking that's about. That's brewed in the the um, uh, Pilsen brewery in Pilsner. Huh. Cool. Um. So Pilsner Arkel is actually a German word for some bizarre reason, though. It's spelled differently, actually, in, in Czech. Relatively easy to get a hold of in New Zealand? It is, yeah. Um, it's, you know, they make quite a lot of it. Um, I think it's got distribution in New Zealand with um, one of the big boys. Yeah. So, yeah, it is pretty easy to find. You will find it reasonably reasonably widely available. We found probably at a good supermarket or um, um, a good local bottler. But again, check your best before dates because fresh is best when it comes Cheers. to imported beer. Yes, right. Um, what's the best before on this one? Uh, it's not fantastic. It's best before... Where are we? Um, next month. I hmm. know. Oh, it's best before... Today, in fact. R today? <laughs> Bang on. Right. Okay. Well, this will be interesting. So um, that's the edge of its date. Which is not really ideal because they're, they're probably giving it ten or twelve months. Definitely through. straight away, you know, notice more of a nose um, than than the the beer last week. Quite sweet. Yeah, sweet so you're getting a bit of that oxidised character. See, the, this should have a nice fresh hoppy nose with a sort of sort of a background maltiness. Yeah, but you're getting a bit of that sort of oxidised sweetness coming through. Good carbonation in there, I guess. Nice clear. It's not as not as as golden as you as light as you think it'd be. It's got a nice sort of deep gold sort of colour to it. Yeah. And then again on the palate, you get a bit of that hoppy freshness. Mm. There's different some hops in there, um, but it sort of gets a bit sweet and flabby through the mid palate as that malt sort of kicks in and that sort of slight oxidation character. A bit firm bitterness. 
Mm. It does. I mean, it doesn't um, strike me as, uh, say, like a craft brew. You know, it 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 feels and tastes like a more of a um, a bulk brewed kind of big um, brewery beer. It, yeah, it definitely is. Um, but again, I mean, this this definitely isn't the beer that left the brewery. You know, I've, I've tried this fresh, cl- much closer to the source, and it's a completely different beer. Mm. You get that punchy, fresh hop character, which is quite spicy. From the local SARS hops, and that's yeah. refreshing, though. It's it's nicely balanced beer, mm. but I think a lot of the character we're really looking for is is no longer there, unfortunately. Okay, so the local example today is um, from Dunedin, a brewery called Emerson's. I'm sure, a lot of people have heard of that. They Definitely, make a, a lot of beer, a lot of good beer. Interesting so, character, the head brewer there. Oh, he is Richard Emerson. Yes, he's very clever. He's mm. stone deaf. Um, which I think gives him an unfair advantage because he can't hear. I think his other senses are heightened. Yeah, yeah. His sense of taste because he makes some fantastic beer. Yeah, so I think he's got an unfair advantage. I think we should make him brew with one hand tied behind his back. And he's, he's been mortal brewers a chance. And he's been brewing the Pilsner as one of his standard beers for a long time now. He has. Mm. This is quite early on, but this is what you describe as a new world Pilsner. I mean, I'm sure all the wine buffs out there have heard the difference between new world and old world wine. Well, that exists quite strongly within um, brewing as well. Would it be would it, would it align itself with the, the more the American style? Well, well, both anything that's not the traditional, yeah, uh, mainly relates to the type of hops used. So, a New World Pilsner in the states would have you know American hops, which are non-traditional, but a New World Pilsner in New Zealand uses New Zealand hops, and they tend to have slightly more hop character than would traditionally be used as well, which this one should have. And so the tasting notes uh, for this one from the official you know, rule book say that it um, would have a medium body, rich, creamy, mouthful, medium to high carbonation levels for a, um, a beer of this style. So the, the Pilsner Ocal is 4.4%. Mm. Yeah, it's relatively moderate. And the Emerson's Pilsner is 4.9%. Similar colours between the two? Ooh, very similar. Emerson's might be a tiny bit lighter, but very similar. Um, and bigger bubbles in the Emerson's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just the size of the bubbles inside the glass are substantially bigger. Huge difference in the aromatic. That Emerson's has got that massive, oh. fruity, passion fruit. Yeah. A little bit grassy around the edge, but just really nice. And closer to the source, of course. Mm. Quite different on the palate. Again, you get those punchy hops up front. Yeah. It's really rich and oily and fresh. Golly, what a good beer. Bit of malt in the mid palate, really clean, crisp finish, which you should be getting in your Pilsner. That's just really, that's a really good result. I should drink this beer more often. Gosh, he's so consistent there at Emerson's, eh? Yeah. Um, and is it challenging to make a beer like this because it has to be so clean and clear? Like well, this? It's, it's probably not as difficult as the one we did last week, the Hellas, because there's a lot less hop character. You know, putting, putting a lot of hop character in the beer, you know, is the big defining character, and that can hide a few minor issues you might sort of see when you've got less hop character. But again, hop character like that, it's not that stable. Hmm. So your packaging and your sort of distribution has got to be spot on because it can sort of degrade quite quickly and lose, and that's still nice and fresh. It's hmm. a really nice hop character. See, the beer was packaged well and is, is nice and fresh. Would it be fair to say, I was thinking about this the other day, that um, the, the beers at this end of the spectrum are the white rice or the white bread of... Of beers, you know, where they're yes. more, they're very refined all the way down, kind of like the white wine versus red wine. A little bit like that, but I mean, this is crossover. I mean, this is there's enough hop character in here. You could almost call this, you know, it's moving into the the pale ale territory. Yeah, because it's got so much aromatic hops, and that's where all these new world sort of um, beers are going. They're sort of upping the ante a little bit, you know, giving you more of what you're looking for. Mm. Thinking about your own beers. Um, does Emerson's use similar hop varieties to yourself at, at, at Hallertau? Uh Yes, I think the this has got a, little, a lot of Rewaka Mochweka. Yeah, um, which we use in our pale ale as well. Yeah, because I could taste that coming through. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So some of those sort of signature New Zealand hops, you know, they're quite quite widely used around a lot of breweries because they're really nice and they're quite mm. unique. You know, yeah, and that right. really, this sort of beer it it screams New Zealand. Yeah, in terms of the characters you're getting from from the hops. Well, I feel just a little bit more beer aware with a little bit of knowledge there about um, the Pilsner variety. 
Next week, will we be moving on to um, something like the amber lager or think, something else? I think we'll look at, look at some amber lager. Well, we'll look at maybe some amber or some dark lager. Okay. We're still on the lager end of the spectrum. Lager in the spectrum, but something a little bit more colour, a little bit maltiness, a little bit more richness, a little bit sort of more malt focused. You can get, you know, some nice lagers which are not golden. They get some, some good dark lagers that Great. are floating around the place. I really look forward to that. In the meantime, you'll find this as a video once more up at kiwifm.co.nz on the Radio Wemo Show page link so you can see the beers also that we were talking about as well. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Wemo. Pleasure.